packing up the classroom is not as exciting as setting up our classrooms, but the end result is summer break. In this video, I am sharing five things that you can do while you're packing up your classroom that will make your life a little bit easier when you unpack this fall. If you're new here, I'm Rachel Vincent and I share tips on running an effective and efficient classroom so that you can get more done and still have time to teach. So my number one advice is to pack with a purpose. It's really hard at the end of the year when you're tired and you're over it to just want to shove things in a closet and go home for the summer. But if you do it intentionally and pack with a purpose, it will make when you're unpacking and setting things up a lot easier and you can do it in less time. So think strategically about how you're packing things away. One of the things I like to do is put like items together. If I'm taking down a bulletin board that I know I'm going to reuse, I'm gonna put all of those items in a plastic bag and that way, and stick it in my bulletin board container and that way, when it's time to pull it out, I can pull out that bag and all the pieces for that board are together. Another thing I've done before is as I am packing up my classroom library is I already have them organized. So I will buy the large sized Ziploc bags and put all of the books from that one category or if I have to fit it in a couple, but all of this books that go in a similar category in that bag. And that just makes putting all those books back into the containers during the fall a lot easier than just throwing all the books in a tub and having to resort my classroom library every single year. If it is possible, leave up what you can. I have worked for schools that have required us to take everything down, but I am very fortunate enough to work at a school that allows you to leave things up. So unless it was academic material that I had to take down for state testing, a lot of the decorations I have left up for the past four years. I know that's not possible at every school and I would love to know what are you required to do? Are you required to take it all down? Leave me a comment below and let me know. This year, I actually have to take everything off of our walls because they are going to be painting our walls this summer. So unfortunately, it will take me longer to set up this fall because I do have to take it all down. But I am actually looking forward to it because it's allowing me to change things up a bit. I am somebody who for a couple of years likes things to stay the same and then every four or five years I get that little itch to switch things up and I'm looking forward to trying some new things and decoration this fall. The next thing that is so important is to pack a classroom setup box and label it clearly so that you know it is the very first thing you should unpack. Put things in it like scissors, tape, a stapler, extra staples, cleaning supplies, things that you will need right away so that you don't have to go digging to find where you packed them but you have everything right there in that box. Something else I actually put into my box are a couple of checklists so that as I'm working through setting up my classroom, I can make sure that I am setting up all the areas I need. If you would like these checklists, you can find them in my free roadmap to the beginning of the school year. It'll be linked below in the description box. The next thing that I highly suggest you do is to take pictures of anything and everything you think that will help you either over the summer or when you're setting things back up. The first thing I like to do is to take video of how my technology is set up, how my printer is connected to my phone, which is connected to my laptop, which is connected to my Promethean board. All of those things are all connected together and there's no way I will remember how it's set up over the summer months. So I take a video of how it's set up before I disconnect everything so that when it's time to reset it up, I just have to watch the video and set it back up the correct way. I also like to take pictures of things that I need to make labels for or different arrangements and setups that I like in the classroom so that I can set it up the same way and also things that I like to change. One of the things I'm going to be doing this year is taking pictures of my walls because I also like to take those pictures, put them into PowerPoint, and then design my wall and see what kind of setup I want. I did this last year and it worked really well and I will do it again this year. As you are packing up and cleaning up, you want to take inventory of what you have and what you need. There's nothing worse than 
being out during the summer months and going, do I still need this or do I have extra of this and you just don't remember because it's been a while since you've been in your classroom. So make a list of things you do want to replenish. Do you need more dry erase markers? Do you need more pens or glue sticks or any of those things that you like to have in your classroom? What else do you need? It's also a great way to keep from overspending and buying things you don't need or that you won't use. The next tip is to label your furniture. Most often schools will hire temporary people to move the furniture out so that the custodians can clean and wax the floors and then they'll move that furniture back and where that furniture goes who knows so one of the things that i started doing the past couple years was taking an index card and labeling the furniture piece and then taking the same number and labeling the wall so that the bookcase or the filing cabinet or something will get put back in that place now I'll be honest, it they don't put it back exactly where I would I would prefer for it to go. However, they generally stick it on that side of the classroom. So that keeps me from having to drag furniture across my newly waxed floors or clean carpet and I'm able to set up my classroom a little bit faster because the furniture is in the general location of where I want it to go. Again, I'm not going to be able to do this this year because we do have to have everything off our walls for painting. So setup will take a little bit longer, but I would also suggest as you're getting ready towards back to school is invest in some furniture sliders because that will help make moving furniture a lot easier. To make your back to school time even easier, check out the video that's on your screen now where I am sharing some things you can do right now at the end of the school year that will take some things off your to-do list for next fall. I'll see you over there.